And remember that if all else fails, there's always money in the banana stand. Thank you and good luck, class of 2014. <laughs> Seniors of 2014, the night is ours. We have braved 13 years of the K-12 education system in preparation for this moment, our high school graduation. I don't care what your GPA or ACT score was, because this is a huge accomplishment, the culmination of every triumph and struggle in our daily lives. You have done a great job. Give yourselves a round of applause. And as with any great job, it deserves to be rewarded. So, as a little gift from me to each of you, I have prepared a little something special. I call it the Viewmont 2K14 graduation wrap. <laughs> If you're recording, start now. Mini Martinson, you out there? All right. As we walk on stage with our honored cords and our tassels and our gowns and diplomas and awards, I want you to think how you got here today. I know what I did. I drove my Hyundai, beep, beep, right down Main Street. Then I hit the light and I made a right and then I dipped. And I dipped, and then I hit the Grand Canyon and I slipped. My car broke down, so I parked with the faculty. Never paid the ticket, cause thug life shackled me. Time to make my rounds before the bell sun. Way to Terry Binker, shook hands with Art Nelson. Walked through the comments, said hi to the ladies. Did a real smooth, like Busk in the 80s. Class began with a ring-a-ding-dang. Hopped over the senior bench like it ain't no thing. I went to Mr. Jacobs to learn about rhyming. I went to Mr. Anderson to learn about timing. I went to Mr. Judy to grab some fat beats. Then I went to Debbie Jones for some edible treats. And now it's lunchtime, got a whole hour to kill. We can study good chat or read out to what ill but in SRC in the library I was memorizing verses like poetry when Vic the Viking descended from the sky and gave me a vision of years gone by I saw the class reunion of 2064 Farmington high rain and the dust were no more but Viewmont kept it real for a hundred years and it came to pass because of all of us here Flashback to the present day, Mr. Banner was asked, Yo, dog, you okay? And I said, Yeah, B. I'm glad we say the V in Guadalupe is Christmas, but now it's time for business. So I wrote this up for y'all tonight. Got to buy Ripplinger to make it tight. I handed it to Gotchberg. Linford, too, got two thumbs up. Now I'm here for you to deliver the messages I received in that dream. Never forget the class of 2014. Oh man, oh boy, I, I hope that was worth it because my mom is giving me the evilest of evil eyes right now. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, I want you to think about what I just did. What was the substance of my rap? Take away the superfluous elements such as the beat, the graduation hall, or the rhyme scheme, and what are we left with? A story. An almost suzically silly story, I'll admit, but a story nonetheless. And that made it interesting. The human mind naturally seeks out stories because they further our understanding of the world through logic and emotion. Stories show us new possibilities and allow us to experience events we were not present for. That was the, the other reason why we loved having Art Nelson as a substitute. <laughs> Would you believe me if I told you we went to school to learn about stories? Think back to every class, every subject, every lesson you've ever had. At the heart of each was a story. English and history were full of tales of human thought and action. Science detailed the microscopic events which made the larger stories possible. We added to objects evolving histories in arts and tech classes. Athletics and student government made stories happen, whether that was on the court or on the dance floor. Even math taught us the templates we use to categorize and analyze stories. Point is, stories are important enough to be the central focus of our education. 
But of course, school is only 50% curriculum. What I'd like to bring to your attention tonight is the other half, the interpersonal half. What will last with us long after we've forgotten our Dickensian metaphors and trigonometric identities are the friendships and memories we made as Vikings. These relationships constitute perhaps the most significant tales of all, the stories of our lives. We as social beings are defined not only by our own acts, but by the acts of those around us. Take a moment, if you would, and look around. Let me repeat that, look around. Do you see them, friends, classmates, teachers, neighbors, family members? These people are the characters in your story. How have they influenced you? In what ways did they make you who you are today? What would you be without them? Do you see how much they've done for you with as little as one sentence? All the good jobs and the, hey, how you doing? So the, oh, you're so pretty. And the, dudes, that was awesome. And the, I appreciate it. We are tremendously affected by the love and encouragement of others. And without it, we are lost. This is the important part, so uh, listen up. As Shakespeare once wrote in As You Like It, all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time will play many parts. Just as these people have played significant roles in your life, you have played significant roles in theirs. Think about that for a moment. Every greeting, every compliment, every acknowledgement you have ever given another human being has touched their life. When fears and problems weighed them down, you came along and helped them out. Ever had someone thank you for something you didn't know mattered? Imagine all the other little things you've done that haven't been made known to you yet. Despite your insecurities and self-esteem issues and adolescent feelings of powerlessness, you've been shaping other stories without even realizing it. Let me illustrate with a few excerpts from the story of John Kim. Let's see, um, ah, here we go. Chapter 19, page 6767. <clears throat> John paused to think as the crowd waited for him to continue his speech. He ruminated over his three years of high school, understanding for the first time just how influential others had been in his life. He recalled how his mood would improve every time Montana Tanner or Lizzie Welch said hi to him in the hall. He recalled how his self-esteem would jump every time Kelton Hirsch or Weston McCloy sought him out. He recalled how his day would brighten every time Emily Tumia or Lincoln Numbers stopped him for a conversation. And he recalled how his troubles would fade away, fade away after laughing alongside Tom Erickson, Joseph Vickers, Cassandra Reeder, or Max Burko. He hadn't even started on Jordan Tony or Hannah Hardison yet, or any of the other myriad names like Brandon, or Ian, or Israel, or Jill. Did any of them know how much they meant to him? How much they had changed him? John didn't know. But he terminated his inner monologue because he realized that everyone was waiting for him to get off the podium so they could go grab dinner. <sighs> I don't think you truly realize the extent of your power as a human being. After all, does the throne stone know about the ripples it creates? The very fact you exist gives you limitless potential. And you can wield that potential to better someone's life. All you gotta do is care. Your smile could brighten a day. Your words could mend a heart. Your embrace could save a life. As my friend Julia Slynn likes to say, 20 minutes of courage are all you need. I'm so sorry, 20 seconds of courage are all you need. Reach out. Don't let your doubts or inhibitions get the better of you. Tap them on the shoulder, smile, and then share the light of your human soul with them. Remind them that they matter, just as I'm reminding you right now that you matter. I promise you they'll cherish that moment forever. 
whether they remember it or not, because your love will become a part of them. Seniors, no. Men and women of 2014, the world is ours. After this ceremony and the all-night party conclude, we will be heading our separate ways. Many of us will continue on to higher education, while others will join the workforce. A few will begin military service, and even more will enter the mission field. The alumni of Umont High School will literally populate the globe. Whether you're staying in Utah or heading off to international grounds, I implore you, spread love and encouragement. We underestimate our own strength in people's lives. And, as we know, even a single conversation can redefine someone's destiny. And if each of us endeavored to change someone's story for the better, we Vikings could authentically make the world a better place. Thank mm -hmm. you.